Good morning, good morning. This is a Laurel Creek shelter. Lots and lots of tent sites here at Laurel Creek shelter. Here is the shelter and here is the temperature. 24 degrees, 24. We get to climbing uphill. That's not bad on a nice cold morning like today when we want to warm up. It is a privilege to walk this trail on behalf of you all. And uh, it's an honor to be here on the legendary Appalachian Trail, especially on such a beautiful day like today. Good morning. I took a slow morning today because I fell asleep editing yesterday again. And uh, I wanted to spend some time editing today so that when I do get into Four Pines, whether or not I stay there for the night, we'll have to see now because the timing is like a half day into tomorrow now. But uh, when I get into there, I want to have them all ready to upload and not have to edit. So I did some editing this morning and got a nine o'clock start today. So slow morning, but I'm okay with that because I got some things done. And again, we're out here to enjoy it, not to rush through our day. So it's not bad to enjoy a little morning in my sleeping bag and take things easy for an hour or two. Good morning and welcome to the Appalachian Trail. My name is Stick the Eagle and I'm hiking northbound on the Appalachian Trail from Springer Mountain, Georgia to Mount Katahdin, Maine. And I am so thrilled that you are along for this journey. Today is day 45. So let's keep on hiking northbound Today, we are starting from the Laurel Creek Shelter, and we are going to probably almost mile 700. Virginia Triple Crown and Eclipse Day is tomorrow. So northbound we go. We're at mile 677, I believe. We've been walking through the woods, but look at that prairie, that meadow over there. Wow. I know that's somebody's property, but I'm really wondering what that random bucket hanging from the tree is for. Is it like for cattle feed or something? Maybe. That's my guess, it's for feeding cattle, but I don't know for sure. It's interesting. For some reason, I just can't stop yawning this morning. Maybe I need some chocolate of some kind. I got enough sleep. I was asleep well before 11. I didn't wake up till seven or later. So I don't know what it is. Yep, out of the woods and to another meadow walk. I see cows and more gorgeous fields. I see PBJ walking up in the field. I'm back. He's back. You can't get rid of me that easily. I left him last night yeah. and he stayed. Oh yeah. As I said in the shelter notes. <laughs> beautiful day though. It is beautiful. Look at I'm the craving like a fresh squeezed lemonade. It's that kind of day. Me yeah. too. It's like a summer day. Summer, you're in a farm pasture. Mm. Not a cloud in the sky. It's beautiful. Cows mooing. <laughs> there goes PPJ. This is pretty scenic. Look at this view, isn't it beautiful? Wow, gorgeous. PBJ is long gone. I don't know how he hikes so fast. Maybe because he's 10 years younger than I am. I don't know. <laughs> it's Sinking Creek Mountain, 1.3. 
Kefir Oak is apparently right up this steepish climb. What do we think of Kefir Oak? I love the bird song. Look at this thing. <laughs> Another angle of Kaffir Oak, 300 years old. Looks like a branch fell off of it. Now we're climbing up this next mountain onto the ridge that will follow for the next five miles and we'll pass the Eastern Continental divide. We keep on climbing. Going up there somewhere. We were on those fields before. You see those fields? On the other ridge line there. But we've come up this whole hill. <laughs> well, well, well. I think we may have finally reached the ridge line. That's a good feeling. I can see the other side. Might be looking for a lunch spot soon up on this ridge line. We are more likely to have service as well. Gotta get a good spot with a decent view. It's a beautiful day out here. Beautiful. Going back in my spring clothes. And uh, no pack cover on today because it's perfect weather. We are on top of Bruiser's Knob or very near Bruiser's Knob and then uh, Sinking Creek Mountain is the name of this place. So we'll be passing Sarver's Hollow Shelter very soon. We won't go down the arc though, cause uh, we're good on water. I'm conserving water until Nide Shelter area, which is right on trail and that's the next good water source and about seven miles from now. So I still have about 800 milliliters of water. Should be good. I'll find a spot for lunch. Uh, and then, uh, plan on filling up at Nide. I may have found my lunch spot. Nice little campsite right here. Might finish up this and maybe some more granola bars today. I'm basically down in my bear canister now, which is great. Who are you? I like your sound. We were walking through some of those pastures earlier. There's a view out to the east too, thanks to those power lines. There's a big pile of stones. That's often called a can. C-A-I-R-N, Cairn. All right, there are so, so many piles of rocks around here. They're like everywhere. I so wish I had gotten that. I just turned around a corner and there was a deer standing within like five feet of me and they spooked it. We spooked each other and it dashed off down the hill there. Wow. I have reached a turn off for Sarver Hollow Shelter, 0.4 miles steep down the hill. I'm not going down there. The sign of the logbook, too far. We will go to the Nadai Shelter and get water there. Let's, let, let's bike six miles from now. Your 12 o'clock tip for today, when you take a break, if it's for five or more minutes, take your pack off. It means so much to your body to take your little load off for a little while, even if it's just for five or 10 minutes. Then when you put it back on, you readjust everything and uh, it almost feels like new. Almost feels like you're just starting out your day after a little bit of snack and a water break. So take your pack off and if you're staying for longer than 10, take your shoes off too. Your feet like that break just as much as your back does. All right, walking along trail, walking along trail and boom. There's a pricker bush. 
that is just right in front, just waiting to get people. Not today, pricker bush. But there's been so many of those. And uh, some have, a lot, have caught my leg or sleeve or something. There's so many of them along here. The trail goes to this. This looks fun. Yeah, just gotta climb over these rocks. <laughs> Those are the very few times that the trekking poles do not become useful. Looks like the trail might be a little interesting in this little next part. But hey, look at that view. I can enjoy that for a bit. This hasn't been the easiest ridge walk with all these pricker bushes wanting, or not wanting, but just leaning out under the trail. I mean, there's good views for the trees, but I feel like I'm spending so much time dodging all of these pricker bushes and I'm still getting pricked. Temperature is 58 degrees, very pleasant day, not a cloud in the sky. I think this is the first ridge line walk that I've been on in the last week that there has been no wind. So PPJ is a lot faster than me. He's well ahead by now, but it sounds like he's going to be taking a triple zero because his parents are coming down to visit him. So he'll be spending some time with them and uh, then he'll be behind me again and then he'll catch up to me again. So we'll just keep leapfrogging each other. So right now I'm considering going to a tent site around mile 695 um, and tenting there, eating dinner at the next shelter, midday shelter, then it'd be an early dinner, but you have to, there's no water at the campsite, but it's less of a big deal that there's no water, you have to pack up water when you're not cooking at the campsite, when I've already cooked at a spot where there is water, so I'm using less water. So I should have no problem having enough water to get up there and then down the hill to the next water source the next day. So I'm considering that campsite tonight, which would leave me nine miles past mile 700 and over Dragon's Tooth tomorrow into more prickers. Not into more prickers, but uh, um, more prickers now. But then over Dragon's Tooth and into Four Pines Hostel tomorrow, which is like nine miles. Now, that's like a half day for me. Um, so I'm considering whether I should just kind of narrow into Four Pines Hostel or whether I should do like an out, in and out kind of thing. I think most of you would tell me that I should narrow into the hostel and take a break and maybe let my friends catch up, but uh, I'm thinking about it. I just came across a gorgeous view here. Much the same view that I've been seeing, but look at those mountains. Isn't that pretty? I think really what I'll be doing, I'll be getting into Four Pines at some point, and then uh, uploading and uh, organizing the packages and doing whatever I need to do. Maybe getting a nice meal if they have them, and then figure it out from there what I want to do. The AT always wants to find the tallest point in the area, just to make views like that even better. It's basically the same view I've been seeing all day, but it's still gorgeous, the mountain ranges. This is very rocky. This is what the trail looks like up here, the tallest point of this ridge. But there's a ridge behind us, and there's a ridge to the east of us. Look at those mountains, like, isn't that amazing? Just that skyline view. The farther you can see, the more amazing it is. We're now getting this slanted rock up here. <laughs> and still slanted rock. This is the trail. Now you can see a little bit of the other side too. Awesome. More walking on slanted bedrock. Cliff on one side, slanted hill on the other. Ah, this is fun, but it does get tiring after a while because I've just been walking on rock after rock. At least it's a nice day for this and not raining. 
This has been a slow ridge walk. Climbing over these big boulders just doesn't stop. But I'm not complaining, I like a challenge. It's just slowed me down. But wait, there's more. I keep looking to see, I don't think I'll be able to yet because I'm still too far away, but somewhere in this direction, according to Far Out, somewhere out there is Dragon's Tooth and McAfee Knob. We're heading there, but I haven't had a view out straight away yet. Well, here it is, Eastern Tunnels Divide, Gulf of Mexico, Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, Atlantic Ocean. Now we get to go down the hill. You see that place down there? This was a nice little spot to rest before heading down the hill. Again, just trying to enjoy these moments out here. It's a little campsite over here too, which is nice. Probably going to one similar like that on the other ridge line. I'm not feeling my best right now. Um, I think my constant diet of trail mix and protein bars is catching up to me a little bit. Look at those red rocks, that's interesting. Um, I miss my diet of salads and vegetables and fruit all the time that I always try to put in my body. But it's hard to carry those on trail. I get a little bit of those with the peak refuel meals and I get apples and things when uh, I get my resupply. Thanks to my Boy Scout troop. But uh, I miss a little bit of my normal diet where I make sure that I'm always balanced and I'm not sure I've been balanced recently. So I'm not feeling my best. I might uh, take some extra time at Nidae Shelter when I get down there. All right, we've got water that way. And uh, shelter this way. So we're gonna take a break at the shelter. The Nide shelter. Lots of sitting stumps here. Sites, picnic table, Nide. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it, but three night camping on the map. Cool. Well, the six o'clock rush has come on. It's just about six o'clock and I feel much better. I had my dinner. I spent about an hour and a half at that shelter talking to a girl named Angel and her friend. Um, we had a little bit of talk about our faith lives. So I shared some details about mine. She shared some missionary work that she's done. And it was a really good conversation. It actually lifted me up quite a bit. Um, so I was feeling a little sluggish and down in the afternoon. And uh, I feel much better now. So we're going to keep hiking and we're going to hike for a while and it'll get dark. We might tent before that, we might not. We'll see what happens. While I have good energy to cover good miles, I'm gonna use it and uh, it's 16.7 into four pines from here. So the more miles I do today, the less I have to do tomorrow into four pines and maybe I can just relax a bit there. Or if they don't have a spot, cause I haven't been able to call them since I haven't had good enough service, then uh, I can just hero on and uh, but it'll be nice to have some more time to go through boxes and uh, if I need to get anything else resupply, uh, they do offer free rides into the market as well. The simplified version of what happened in uh, the church I served was that uh, I was changing too much. Um, I was trying to uh, make a 
missional outreach and involve more technology to try to attract new people into the church. And I felt like my vision for the church was going pretty well. Um, but uh, the leaders of the church thought, apparently thought it was too much change. Because um, that's the reason they told me uh, when, uh, when they told me that uh, they were going to move on into a new chapter. So, I think to grow, churches need to uh, incorporate technology to reach the younger crowds so that, uh, well, you attract the younger families and attract new people into the church. And that, th that, that, that pattern takes time to see growth, but I was optimistic about it. But uh, sometimes you change too much too quickly and some of the elders of the church don't appreciate that change and then the search for other churches was affected by the was affected by the claim that I don't listen well enough to constructive feedback and things like that it's a very long, drawn-out story that I won't bore you with the details of, but uh, I am reflecting on this season and how it was a hard separation. But, uh, you know, maybe God was calling me to pastoral ministry for just a short time for a reason that I don't know yet. And I just have to trust that God will lead me into the right direction. Anyway, Angel was very affirming of that and trusting God and talking about her missional lifestyle for a while, so... I thought that conversation was very helpful and that was an hour and a half very well spent at the shelter. Something else that spurs me on is the thought of having a mostly rest day at Four Pines tomorrow. The more miles I do now, the less miles I do tomorrow. And the sooner I get into there and you can just enjoy hanging out in one place for a little bit. Really nice off street parking lot here. AT continues on past the road. Oh my, another bridge out, Craig Creek. They say instead of the Appalachian Trail, take the road, high water bypass. Interesting. Nah, I'll take the trail. Don't tell me that was the high water bypass. <laughs> Easy rock hop across. There's probably another one. Eddie Murphy Monument is uh, 3.7 miles. All right, walk through this lovely green pine forest. No, it was not the bypass row. Let's see what we're dealing with here. This is it. This is it. Oh. That looks like I could almost rock hop across that. All right, let me try going down there. Trails right across. That's not too bad. Actually, what I found over here, it's an orange blazed detour with these orange trees. So, we we'll see what that's about. See if it leads us to a better crossing. It's definitely a trail people have taken. There's a ladder here of some sorts. All right, y'all, I officially tried it, and uh, I officially decided to wet out my shoes and uh, try out their drying properties. And it doesn't actually feel that bad right now, having it all wet. We conquered you by soaking our shoes in the river. Now we have squishy feet, but that's okay. I knew that would happen sometime or another that 
I would completely step in the water with my trail runners. And I did it for the first time today on day 45. And it did not feel bad. Now we'll just see how long it takes to dry out. Like I said, onward northbound. I feel proud that I finally got my feet wet with my shoes on. Like, am I a real through hiker now? And it felt good too. It felt really good. Very refreshing. And so begins the climb up Brush Mountain. We're just going to be looking for a good tenting spot tonight. The next shelter was nine miles from the last shelter. So I don't know how many miles I've gone so far. Probably two, two and a half since the shelter that I left, that I stayed at for an hour and a half. But uh, we're just gonna go until we see a good tenting spot, hopefully before it gets dark, and uh, then set up our tent tonight. Lovely little pine forest in this evening walk. And uh, it'll feel good after I wasn't feeling well heading into the shelter. It'll feel good. I was actually contemplating staying there, but after sitting there a while and a good dinner, I felt much better and a good conversation. And uh, now I will feel glad to have a few extra miles behind me today. So then I can do less tomorrow. And I still haven't decided when I get into Four Pines if I'm going to stay there tomorrow night or if I'm going to push on like the first shelter afterwards and try to get in more miles. We'll see how I'm feeling. I'm not going to rush anything. I'm not going to rush the trail. I'll just see how my body feels and see what time it is. Here we go up the side of this mountain. You know, climbs like these never feel so bad. After a good peak refuel or a fresh grind meal, there's the sun out to the west gonna set be behind that mountain. Look at how beautiful the world is out here in the mountains. It's just gorgeous out here. I hope you appreciate it as much as I do. And I enjoy these late day pushes in the evening now that we have so much more sunlight every single day. Cover more miles and enjoy the process while doing it. And get a big hill behind me while I have energy. Whereas in the morning, I might be slow going up it. You know what? Do things while you're feeling strong. No matter what time of day it is. There was just a squirrel there. Now it's gone. <laughs> and what do you think? Not great. Not very flat. Very rooty. Let's move on. All right, just looked at far out, and in 1.1 miles and 800 feet, there's a bench. And near that bench is apparently a few tent sites. So that is now my destination. It is 7.20, so 1.1 miles and 800 feet. Should get there in roughly 30 to 40 minutes with the elevation. The sun is thinking about disappearing behind those clouds. All right, tomorrow's eclipse day. Look at that sun. Even with the clouds, it's just gorgeous. Amazing. That's pretty out there too. Oh, mountains are always so beautiful. All right, here's the AT, south, north. Here's our bench. I'm told if we go up the hill a little bit, there's some good tenting sites. So let's check it out. Nice, they weren't kidding, were they? This is amazing. All right, y'all, there's still plenty of light for me to set up my tent here at mile 660, or 692. That is the end of day 45. If you'd like to follow along in the rest of my AT journey, I encourage you to subscribe. We have the big three in Virginia coming soon. Dragon's Tooth tomorrow and McAfee Knob and then Tinker Cliffs after that. That might be the next day. Uh, probably will be the next day. So if you'd like to follow along in my AT journey, be sure to subscribe. Also, if you'd like to follow along for some live updates, but you may follow along on my Instagram account. Same handle as my YouTube, at Stick the Eagle. For now, 
this is this is fun you all and i'm so glad i have you along that we're together on this remember to embrace the journey and always happy trails Ta -da. now just throw all my sleep gear inside and my pack underneath the tarp